Oh, what's going on? What's going on, everybody? On a back-to-back -back Thursday night, Mike and Mish. What's up, Mike? I am chilling, watching some NFL. The NFL is back. You're watching NFL right now, and we're Fucking doing a Thomas show. Brady. What the fuck's wrong with you, Mike? Where's your focus? Where's your dedication to this show that you got a fucking football game on in the background? Everything takes a back seat to Thomas fucking Brady. You hear me? <laughs> Thomas Edward Brady Jr. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, I got it on. Wash too, your bro. mouth out. Hey, anyways, let's uh let's go ahead and shout our sponsors real quick because we have an awesome guest tonight. It's guaranteed to be uh an entertaining conversation. Let's go ahead and I'll throw them on there on the old fucking ticker there. And ladies and gentlemen, we got the fighter's friend, the fighter's friend. They got the medibles and the medicated vapes, all that stuff, the strong THC, the CBDs, the hemp, all that stuff. Fix yourself up. Go to uh, www.fightersfriend.com. Use promo code uh, Mike. No, Mish20. Jesus, you don't get one yet, Mike. He's just but... rubbing it in my face. That's all. <laughs> all right. We got uh, Next Level Elite. Go to www.nextlevelsups.com com slash mike and mish use promo code mish 10 get 10 percent off your purchase for all supplements sleep aids brain food all that stuff vegan protein all the good clean muscle building stuff right mike that you're on right now obviously brain and food Brain great food. things all right we got killfoot clothing killfootclothing.com veteran owned american made apparel they make the uh, the uh, the mission accomplished shirt that you see me wearing tonight. Go to www.killfootclothing.com and check out their line. And if you want a uh, mission accomplished shirt like this bad boy right here, hit me up on my messenger or Instagram DM, and uh, I'll get you a shirt. And last but not least, Massage Therapix. Go see Jackie Holden. She knows how to uh, communicate with the body, find trigger points, and alleviate all pain, neck, back, knee whatever no she'll, she'll find do it. it yeah she'll do it and yeah, if you're a veteran or an active duty military member go to www.holdinghandsmassage.com book yourself an appointment with her get an appointment get a referral through your uh your provider you know the va will pay for miss jackie to fix your ass if you are not <laughs> in the military go to www massagetherapix.com and get yourself an appointment that way that's With like all that four stuff. w's yeah yeah yeah. www dot we got a big guest tonight everybody the brains behind the madness over in thailand fight circus bare knuckle kingdom full metal dojo he is the one the only mr john nut what is going oh, on oh hey john didn't see you there oh hey <laughs> <laughs> Salute, Skitty, you said. Didn't see you there. That happens. Hey, I didn't see you there. What's new, Mr. Nut? How are you? Again, again, living the dream, par usual. You know what I mean? I've hit, I've hit some golf balls this week, so life can't suck that bad. You know what I mean? And again, as it was just pointed out, Tommy Brady is on the TV. I mean, uh, yeah. We're not watching it. We're taking a break from it. But again, rings, rings on yeah. fingers and goats in, in farms. You know what I mean? And so anytime Tom Brady's online... You know oh, what? I was just telling Mike, he was like, man, imagine if he wins another one this year. I said, you know what? Oh. There's a very good possibility. They are the only team in the NFL returning all 22 starters from last year. I know. Year. Yeah. Every yeah, single starter that won that Super Bowl last year is back on the field this year. I really could give two shits about football uh, right. in general since living in Thailand. Like, it was one of the first things to go. And, and now, like, Grant, I grew up like a high school hero. Are you with me? I, I was a captain. Uh, you were the I, I loved it, but like when living abroad, huh? yeah, man. I mean, I I loved it, but like, and I'm from I'm from Boston. Like originally, I'm from Marblehead, Massachusetts. So like, I grew up with Bledsoe and and Tom Brady is like a hero. But I just don't care about it except for Tommy, right. except for Tommy. <laughs> he you know brings what I mean? us together. Like, you know, I didn't even mind the move. You know, so he is the glue that keeps us all together. Oh, he sure much is. <laughs> you know, it's funny that you said that because. Mike and I were just talking about that before you you came on. Um, we I was always like a sports enthusiast. Like I watched baseball, basketball, football, hockey. I was a Boston sports everything guy. But since we started doing this show, 
I dedicate all my time and effort into combat sports now. And I was having a conversation with somebody today about the Boston Red Sox and they were talking to me and I was like, I don't know anything you're yeah. fucking talking about. And I've been a Red Sox fan my whole life. I'm like, nothing. Got nothing yeah. for you, man. Well, again, that's because you guys are doing a fantastic job. I mean, obviously you gave a sp- shout out to your sponsors and I'll give a shout out to them too. I mean, obviously you're, you're hustling and you're in the game now. It was, it was, it was probably a little bit of a passion project and a hobby, which it probably still is. But mm-hmm. as you get a little bit deeper down the, the rabbit hole of combat sports and the industry, either you, you love it or you don't. And, and when you love it and you are passionate about it, things fall by the wayside. Got a little yeah. more interest in some things. Kind of forget about some stuff. I don't even know what my family's names are. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it shit happens. You know? Fuck yes, it does. Yep. And so, how long you been in the states? We ran into you in Biloxi. Uh, you're you're sticking around for a little while and, yeah, until man. some things get straightened out. How long you been in the states? Well, again, we uh we got Fight Circus, which was supposed to happen on June 20th. I found out about the cancellation of that on June 15th. Now, I actually was coming back because I had uh, family issues. Uh, my my pops got sick, uh, and you know I needed to come back for that. And uh, we don't need to get into all of that type of stuff, the personal business. Mm-hmm. But um, so I got back in mid June and I also am working with, uh, you know, obviously fight circus. We're hand in hand with the cam soda people. Mm-hmm. I mean, and so you guys do know who they are. A lot of people think it's pornography. Yeah. It's not it's a streaming website, right? That just like only fans, just like any of the others. It mm-hmm. Just so happy. The easiest uh, is able to be streamed on there is women taking their tops off. So that's where they went. But they did so well during the pandemic. Clearly, clearly they did well during the pandemic that they wanted to branch off and do other things. And one of the other things, um, the Camp Soda guys aren't completely deep in it. But I see Mike, who I like have a man crush on and is, is I don't know if you remember him, but like he is Mr. Kimbo Slice. Like he was mm-hmm. Kimbo Slice's manager. He's got the life rights to Kevin Ferguson and all that type of stuff. And uh, uh, me and Mike are, are buddies. And Mike is also involved in the venture of High Rollers, which is cannabis-infused jujitsu. So oh. I had the good fortune of uh, emceeing High Rollers on July 7th. And then I have I have the next one next weekend, uh, September 18th, live in Vegas. Um, I'm not sure. I know it'll be on YouTube, but I think – that, I mean, I know that he's talked to Mr. Feldman from BKTV about putting it on the application there. Um, they, high know, rollers, high on, rollers, man. Still BK. They got they don't have the gloves on, you know. So that's cool. <clears throat> um, so next week is that cops versus stoners, and I've I've been informed not to do any division. I I made a uh, <laughs> I made like a a voiceover and a promo for them where I was like. For every time I had to stick weed up my ass, fucking cops. You know what I mean? For for every time I was about to get a hand job in high school and the cops broke down the door, fucking cops. And then I made what like one from the stoners, you know, like the cops' point of view. Like for every time I have a detail and a full debtor piece, you know, like and and I made a good little one, and they were like, ah, "Could you not do that? We don't really want any division. It's more much more about bringing the cops and the stoners." <laughs> together in a symbiotic <laughs> kumbaya type of uh, relationship. So I'll well, agree. Them roll I'll around next week, each other. Yeah. How fun is that? Exactly. So September 18th, high rollers. Uh, I got that. And then I'm, I'm going to stick around for the uh, Montana BKFC October 9th. That's um, they just announced obviously Melvin Gillard versus diesel Riggs, Joe Riggs. Yep. Yep. And that that's in Montana. So I will be there for that show. <laughs> And then I'm going back to Thailand about October 15th and getting ready for my Halloween party. So that's my yeah. next hell, hell yeah, man. Faria is rumored to be fighting on that card also. Faria, yeah. Starling, Starling. Right now, she'll mm-hmm. be on that card. Uh, Tyler Vogel yeah. saw on that card. I, I don't know any of the other ones. Those are the ones that have posted it on their Instagrams and like, but you know what? 
the one the one beef that we all have with BKFC and like uh, we'll just tell you what it is right quick. They never let us know who these fucking people's opponents are till about two weeks away from the goddamn event. Unless it's like the main event or the co-main, they keep all that shit a secret, man. I'm like, of course. Why not course. promote who they're fighting? I don't know. I, I think it's just, well, that has to do with them being still a young promotion, still a sport. But like when you are a young promotion and some of your up and comers aren't names, I mean, they might be names to you and I, but remember that the casual fan doesn't know. So you go by the Vince McMahon way of promoting and you promote your business and your promotion ahead of promoting the fighters. That's no offense to the fighters, but like fighters will come and go, especially like in a, in a, a, a an organization like this, a promotion like this. I mean, everybody always on mine, I've gotten hammered by people that are like, yo, you promote yourself so much more than, than the fighters. Well, that's because when I did dare fight sports for years, all of our fighters got picked off by every other promotion. So I would have you for one or two fights. And I put my money and my efforts and my time into making all these graphics, videos, spending loads and loads of money on you. And all of a sudden, you know, th there's no loyalty in this industry. There's zero loyalty in this industry. So like, you know, what, and unless I hold a, a huge contract that's long, you know, long term over your head, you're generally going to leave me. Now, Dave's done a fantastic job of becoming the top of the food chain in this sport um, right off the bat. But still, for the, the younger guys, I mean, most of these guys are not promoting themselves well. I mean, you, right. you, you guys have had a, uh, had a podcast for how long? Uh, <sighs> just about a, almost a year now. And yeah, and I started getting, it. Yeah, I was on another po podcast. I was on another MMA podcast for about a year. And then when COVID hit, that one kind of died. My partner over there kind of like we stopped. So after like months of sitting on my ass doing nothing, I started this one as like you said, just another passion project back in on November 11th, uh, Veterans Day 2020. There you go. And in 10 months, we've we've made a lot of progress, man. So right. And, and see, I mean, like you guys, when you guys are talking to people, I mean, I think if I was a fighter or if I was a manager, especially if I was a manager, I would go out and I would like hammer away at like a hundred different businesses that you might think give cheeseburgers. I'm not talking real cash. I'm talking like just, just would you like to be on for some sort of efforts, whatever it is. Do you want to do a barter and trade agreement? Do you want to do, do something so that we can grow your brand and you can grow our brand and we can work in teamwork to, you know, grow the game and support the right. sport. Mm -hmm. And most of the fighters, I think they got a little bit of, um, I mean, I'm not saying that any, Hey, you know, when we were in Mississippi, none of those guys were divas at all. They were all gentlemen. They were all class acts. But the thing is, is you can tell that a lot of them don't know how to try to sell themselves. Yes. And I'm not saying that you need to be a whore, but you do need to get out there and, and promote. And there's, you know, there's a guy that was there that night that, sells himself more than it, lorenzo hunt you see yep. him at every single event yep. lorenzo's talking to the fans taking pictures he's raising money for suicide awareness for veterans he's like that fucking away, guy away tickets he yeah, doing he, the interviews doing after shows he, like he, they need to all take a page out of his book because everyone's starting to know who lorenzo hunt is for sure and he's becoming everybody's yeah, favorite I, I fighter because he puts in the work you nailed it on the head. I mean, like you guys as active duty, you guys already have it. But like, if I was again, a fighter and I was trying to make a name for myself, I actually wouldn't go after any kind of real brand. Like I would never go talk to Subway or McDonald's cause you're not going to get anywhere, but I would go talk to nonprofits and I would go see what I could do to like help out the community. So like, go talk to the YMCA, go talk to the boys and girls club, go talk to like someplace that once again, you can give back to, and it doesn't make, cause especially we're in like brutal sports, right? Now, I don't think right. that this is, should be sold to kids. Uh, one of the reasons that I like Bare Knuckle is because I think that it's always going to stay man's man and be above the, above the 18 level, if you will. Uh, that's where I like my combat sports. I think the UFC, since signing the Fox deal, it, it's become a lot of what we didn't really want it to be. Right. You know, but uh, if you could get in there with, you know, helping the homeless, helping, I mean, there, how many different opportunities are there to help during this period of pandemic? bullshit time you know 
So, yeah, that's what and like yeah, Lorenzo's been doing that. Like he keeps he auctions off his like fight robe, he auctions off his fight shorts, he and all that money goes to a charity of whatever one he chooses that time. The guy we had on last night, Matt Bassett, you know Matt Bassett from yep. Connecticut. Um, you look at his list of sponsors from last night's show, he's got like the Connecticut's Children's Hospital, he's got the Lucky Finn project for uh congenital amputees. He's like half of his sponsors are like hospitals and nonprofits. Right. And I was like, that's pretty dope, man. I saw the list of sponsors. What we, what we like to do is get all the fighter sponsors prior to the show and we'll put them in the ticker at the bottom. So their sponsors sure. get some. And uh, when he sent me that list, I was like, damn, man, he's got a lot of charities. Are his yeah. I love it, man. So, so with that said, we got a BKFC 21 coming up tomorrow night yeah how yep. how are you feeling about this card how come you didn't make the trip out there i didn't make the trip because of family and because i have uh next week in vegas Ooh. so i just i gotta stick around for the fam dango mm-hmm. and I, I was with that the whole bk you know their office is in outside of philadelphia and i'm living outside of philadelphia as well so i was in the office on tuesday of this week going over everything with them and uh again just reaffirming some different stuff uh, for, for future, for the future, it looks bright. I got to wear shades and, uh, <laughs> yeah, man, I, it, they didn't really need me on this. I plan on trying to be a Burt Watson though, for them on the, uh, on the Montana card. I want to get oh, back yeah. in there. Yeah, man. I'm going to, I'm going to try to do a little bit of, we rolling. Music. Oh yeah. That's going to sure. be you in the back. We rolling. <laughs> yeah, yes. A lot of that. A lot of that. I Let's go out. nuts. Get knocked out. Now's your time. I think I mean? let's go yeah. nuts. That's that's your that's gonna be your slogan. You got to add that in there somewhere. You know, <laughs> all screw. Sprinkle them. your nuts Nothing in there somewhere. Fucking screw them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sprinkle your nuts in there somewhere. I don't know. You're gonna love my nuts. That's what it could be. You're gonna love On my nuts. Skin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the slap chop. Of course. Yeah. So you get you're not out there. We're not out there. We got a three day drill starting in the morning. We got. Yes. And, uh, you know, since I, I got the position that I'm in now, I can't really leave the troops in it, it. I love the fact that I made, I made it to where I'm at right now, but now that like this show's taken off and we're getting credentialed to go to all these events and I'm like, now, come on now, now more than ever, I want to skip all this training and stuff, but I'm in charge of it. So I got to kind of fucking be there. <laughs> I feel you, uh, man. But it'll be the future though. I mean, right. it's a great card. Uh, I mean, well, for again, for, right here. for the bear, the hardcore bare knuckle fighting championship fans, it's clearly a great card. Um, but again, the casuals they're going to recognize a couple of the names. Yeah. Um, I think obviously the Houston Alexander fight, it, like just jumping right into it. I know my man is like, was he 48, 49 years old? I mean, but like for for guys I like know. us, I think we, I think we all remember him from. Uh, you know, I remember him beating Keith Jardine. I remember him Jesus. beating um, Alessio Sakara because I was a huge fan of, of uh, Sakara with all his tats on. And, I mean, you know, he's lost – all of his losses come to, like, you know, real legit Jeez, guys. Man. So, did you, I'm, I'm excited for that fight. No, Houston – uh, Sorry, Kyle. I was going to ask him if he saw the weigh-ins today with Houston Alexander and Wes Combs. Y- yes, yes, obviously. Their weight is, like – so, Wes is, like, 225 – and Alexander's like 199. I'm like, how the hell does that have? It's like two different weight divisions there yeah. now. But I mean, again, you know, car- cardio is going to come into play, right? Yeah. Hopefully cardio yeah. Play. I, I hope Houston Alexander can dance a little bit. I don't know how they see. I don't like, I don't know how like the sanctioning body like allows that. I, I Can they, is that okay for me to 199? Like the weight division is 206 and up. He's like, I love how we're talking about sanctioning bodies. Well, not just on a new sport, but especially the same weekend that fifty-nine-year-old oh, Evander's yeah. fighting Holyfield. Juice to the gills, right? You know, Jesus That's Jesus true. Belfort. Yeah, I mean, uh, different different states do different things. Different boxing commissions do different things. And I think, as we saw in Mississippi, you know, they are using the boxing commission there. So a lot of those guys. You know, what's so funny about these sports, again, this is like what I like about being over in Thailand is everybody that I work with is a fan. And, you know, we're not really underneath necessarily a a sports authority. We're under like 
uh, commission that's trusted amongst the community. And so, like, I don't have anybody like the Nevada State Athletic Commission where they're all like NASCAR fans or football fans or they don't necessarily watch fighting and they're actually signing off on letters and things that need to be signed and dotted T's and checked I's and all that type of stuff. You know what I mean? So um, when somebody weighs in at 225 and another guy weighs at 195, you know, you know, Omaha, Nebraska is like, yeah, yeah, they look, they look kind of the same. They look about the same, you know, Skills it's not up. that much. <laughs> yeah. I mean, both, both bad like, dudes. yeah, like you said, Houston Alexander is a bad dude. He's been around for a long time and fought a lot of killers. Like uh, Big Ben says in the comments there, Wes Combs when showed up there looking like the Undertaker. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He looked just like the freaking Undertaker on the stage. Um, but Wes Combs is no joke either. Like he's been around for 18, 19 years in the MMA game. He's got a yes. record of something like 22 and 6 too. He's a He's a bad motherfucker himself. That should be a scrap. My my fight of the night obviously is is the main event. Fucking Mike Richmond. Me and Mike spent a lot of time with Mike Richmond and his crew down in uh, Birmingham and really got to know those guys. And that dude is one of the most even keeled, stone cold killers I've ever met in my entire life. And I met a lot of them. That dude is a bad motherfucker. And I hope he not not trying to be biased uh, you know we got to try to be unbiased with these shows here but i would love to see mike win and get himself a title shot against uh tiago alves do you, you like awesome. people that look old timey with mustaches and whatnot yeah or? yeah <laughs> yeah yeah him and yeah. tj tj, TJ chang. chang with that <laughs> someone Talk told me him. today that yeah, tj sure. chang needs to put out like a uh like a segmented uh you know instructional videos on how to do your mustache you know like i think that would be gold like the guy who, like takes care of his mustache i mean fucking better than anybody look at that so it was someone at work today was like oh how the hell does that guy get a mustache like they should put out some instructional videos on instagram or some shit i was like maybe he should yeah so what's crazy for you guys to not know on a little cultural note but in thailand there's like the most famous singer is a, a band called carabao their symbol is like this and they all rock that mustache. They really? All rock, and cause it's like the bull horns. And like, yeah. so the, a carabao like is a, is a quiet. It's a, uh, it's a, a water Buffalo. So it's okay. got the horns like this and they're like the rolling stones. I mean, they've been around since like the eighties, I believe maybe even the seventies. And, uh, and so that mustache, doesn't just go well for the photos and the whole look and the gimmick of him being a bare knuckle fighter in Thailand. He gets it's part of the culture. From the locals, you know what I mean? They all they all dig it. I mean, obviously TJ, he's got he's he's got a lady friend, but the, the ladies still love him. He's a very handsome guy that knows what he's doing with his uh with his with his good looks. So uh, I think it was Fight Circus One. Um... When you introduced him, you uh, you talked about how good he looked. <laughs> yes, you, I think you said you would lick the sweat off of his ass. Uh, yep, yep. <laughs> right? Drink yeah. it. Drink. I'd like to bottle it. I'd like to bottle it up. Bottle it up. Yeah. Sell it to the masses, yeah. like Chuck Norris' sweat. Spritz it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it's got to smell like, or or it's got to smell something, you know, potpourri ish. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, like DJ lavender and chamomile. Good. Yeah, lavender yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Cam children's Cam. tears. Exactly. Um, so, who do you got in the in the heavyweight bout tomorrow night? Josh Burns and Sam Shoemaker. Honestly, I do fun. not. I don't understand if I really don't know if their heat is real because Burns has gone on this tear about how he's going to break his face and he's going to fuck him up and he's and he's going to hurt this man and I'm going to chill. Blah 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 blah. But then they're like completely gentlemen with each other on fucking stage today at the weigh-ins I, they didn't even they didn't even put a, a little even a little bit of a show on you know what yep. i mean so yeah i mean again you know I, I i this is another one where like i i like burns i like people that do that type of trash talk but i think shoemaker is gonna gonna get the w so again, like you, you and I aren't going to exactly place any wagers on this, but if I was going on betonline.ag, hey yo, uh, <laughs> that, that's where my parlay loot would go to. Um, you know, I, I again, I, 
these are all the heavyweights that we're getting in BKFC are coming at like the late thirties level. They're yeah. all my, my age bracket. So I appreciate it. I, that. It's one of the other reasons that I love BKFC to tell you the truth, but I would, wouldn't mind seeing some younger blood come in there. I wouldn't mind seeing some younger big boys come in there, but th- this is the thing when you got two 38 year olds that are both the same experience in different combat sports, you got a good matchup that's going to come. And that's what I think Nate Shook and Dave Feldman and his team, you know, Dave Jr. And all those guys, they're, they're doing a good job with that. So, you know, I loved seeing Bobo O'Bannon do his thing uh, on the last card. Yeah. I would love to see uh, my boy Panda Banks come over here yep. and, and Panda jump Banks. in that mix. And I think that he could, you know, like, again, when I see Shoemaker and, and Josh Burns and I think of Panda, I don't know why Panda couldn't dance on uh, with, with either of those with either of those two guys. I mean, I think it's a little bit before he gets to the Beltran land, but uh, you know, we'll see. He, he's been a little more vocal online too. Lately Panda has, he's been, he's been putting videos up kind of trashing these heavyweights in the BKFC. I think he's getting, he's trying to angle his way in there, piss some people off and maybe spark some interest, which I like. I was noticing him doing that and that's fucking smart of him, man. I mean, they're going to bring over TJ in uh in no- November November twelfth right November twelfth hopefully yeah yeah again that, so, was, that was part of the chats on uh Tuesday we were discussing opponents yeah. for TJ uh which it got it definitely got interesting on that one yeah um, really really yeah, I know that he had a few that he told us last night on the show he had a few names yep. he he mentioned Derek Finley and uh Josh Sykes he, he Caleb said, Harris Caleb yep. Harris Joe Elmore yep. It'll be interesting to see what weight he wants to come in at, though. Because, like, again, he was walking around at, like, 82 kilos. So what's that? Like, 177 pounds, 180 pounds. And yet he has gotten down to 155 and fought at at, at 70 kilos. So, like, he, he can fluctuate very well. Um, uh, I'll be interested to see if he decides to go down a weight so that he can be a little bit bigger amongst those – that, that light – he did tell us that he he wouldn't want to go any lower than 165 is what he is what there he said. Go. There you so, go. So cuz I had asked him in a previous conversation if he would consider going to 155 because there's a lot of a lot of guys down there to fight too. And he was like, "Eh, I, I got really no interest in uh, going under 165." So um he used to cut a bunch of weight. I I I uh, MC'd him for the Roar of Singapore years ago. I mean, but and by years ago, I mean like three or four. And um, he had a fantastic boxing match. This is, again, gloves on. But um, that's when he was a little bit smaller and, and didn't beef up as much. And, you know, you can tell that he hit the weights. You can tell that he packed on the pounds. And, I mean, he's been eating steaks. So, like, well, he's just been taking it a lot more seriously. You know, three he- years ago, three years ago, he was drinking a bottle of Jameson the night before the fights. And now he's like, I think he's like five weeks off the sauce and he's not, and he's not planning on drinking until November. So he is taking it a lot more serious than he's ever, you know, the shenanigans that he was pulling before. Like, I know I, again, it was like, I know I, he took like 10 days off the booze before Fabiano. Yeah. You know, I don't, he definitely didn't take any nights off the booze before fighting Sri Raja on the first uh, fight circus. He was having cocktails at the, fucking way in so you know um <laughs> so he was, he's know. a he's a bit of a party boy you know, like he, he get he gets after it is what you're saying Dude, he's like the party boy <laughs> you know he's a I mean? regular chris pontius oh yeah he, yo he, he is a full tilt party boy you know I mean, yeah uh so, i mean hey, again like i i personally in the future if, if we could have a him versus tyler goodjohn type of thing i know tyler's a little bit smaller but that's like i want to see random pikey tattooed porn star against random pikey tattooed porn star hey oh i know. want i wanted to ask you that because earlier in the comments somebody said uh what is mr nuts opinion on tyler good john so there you go what is your what is your honest opinion on tyler i met him in london i met him at the o2 i was at a, a bkb show um i was at the godbeer fight when godbeer won his uh heavyweight title and uh you know, I met Jimmy Sweeney and 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 all those boys. And uh, Tyler was one of them. And he was wearing like a leopard skin, shiny 
you know, silk shirt and was just that, like he was a guy that could pull off a leopard skin silk shirt, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, like a lot of these events, you know, people know who I am, but they don't know what I do and they don't know my history and that type of thing. So generally like at, at, at events like that, you know, I'm, I'm suited and booted and wearing a tie and a jacket and I come off as one of the old men in the uh, room. You know what I mean? What, what is he an investor? What is he a shareholder? Is he, is he with like one of the, you know what I mean? So they don't, they, mm-hmm. they didn't know. He was very, very polite to me, overly polite to me. So I didn't get to see any of his antics either, <laughs> but believe you me, he was like, you know, he was on a pen, you know, smoking a pen. Yeah. And I, yeah. You know, I mean, this industry doesn't exactly hold like it's bare knuckle boxing at the end of the day. I don't think I'm making fun of anybody. Like it's not croquet and tangere and sailing. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah, uh, <laughs> We're not getting Anything Rolex less would be sponsors. uncivilized. Getting, yeah. We're not getting Rolex <laughs> sponsors. We're getting Mary Jane sponsors. Yeah. So um, I, he was nothing but cordial to me. So I have nothing nothing bad I can say. Personally, I think that uh, his first matchup, you know, a lot of people think Felony won that fight. I don't know if I lean that Felony won that fight, but I'm just shocked that he didn't put Felony away. So yeah, that close, I, right? Well, yeah. And, and, like, and I, I know I, that... I, People thought it was a lot of excuses that he had, but they were pretty legit excuses. He had COVID like yeah, he had COVID. two weeks before, and he yeah. had to quarantine twice in in, in a month. Mm-hmm. And then he had, and then he showed up with no team, no corner, and asked fucking Misfit and Lorenzo Hunt to corner him that night. Yeah, mm-hmm. on the spot. So like, I don't know, man. He did all right for for all the shit that he had to go through to get there. So yeah, he was in Dubai, like in a cell. I mean, like his train, his training camp was in a Dubai hotel room. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, kudos to him for for getting it done. Um, at the, at the same time, like he's so marketable uh, for the BKFC, especially over there. That if he had come out and actually put felony away in like the first or the second, it could have been, it could have been huge. You know, and yeah. I just think that I, you know. I don't know how the BKFC team feels about him, but I know that if I was the promoter, I'd be a little, a little disappointed. Right. It's a weird, it's a weird dynamic between him and the BKFC and also good John and the BKFC. Like these are two big name fighters that the BKFC could have done a lot with, but they just can't seem to get along. I don't really know what the well, hell the problem have you ever is. Have felony? Oh, felony! I know that felony is felony. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we had felony. I'm felony holds had, the world record for the wor- for the most hard R N words ever said on our on show. On this show, oh yeah, <laughs> he he wasn't even dropping the A. He wasn't even dropping it with the A at the end. He was hard yeah. R in it the whole time. We're like, ooh, okay. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. We're laughs> Just let him go. Plantation, my man. Yeah, exactly. yeah. We let him go. He went nuts. Yeah, he is. Um, Actually, we had him and Jason Knight on together like the week that they were supposed to. Was it the week they were fighting? Yeah, it the was week the they week they were fighting Game one. at Game Bread One. They were fucking talking shit to each other, but Felony was off the his fucking rocker. And I feel like he always is, but he was like, as soon as he came in, it was like N word, N word, N word, cracker, N word, shut up, cracker, N word. <laughs> Swear yeah. to God, I'm not even kidding. Hey, like, you know what, John? Like you, you would love this. Wall, dude. I was like, hey, man, I was like, Felony, I think it would, I would be doing everybody a dis- uh, an injustice if I didn't ask you to tell the Vendelay Silva story. And he goes, for the thousandth motherfucking time? He goes, give me 20, give me 10 bucks right now and I'll do it. I was like, I'll Venmo you right fucking now. He goes, <laughs> Venmo yeah. me. So I ven- I pull my phone out and I Venmo and I show it to him on the screen like that. He goes, okay. So here I was in the back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he lays on the ground. He laid on shit. the floor. Oh, my God. It was so funny. Yo, I know good. that he's rolled over to other promoters that show, like, way that you do handle yourself if you want to be taken seriously and if you want to be considered a professional. And, like, I'm not saying that he's not. And he'll always get love for his antics and pride. But, like, my man wears, like, you know, I've I've seen people at shows like, oh, that's a great shirt. Did you steal that from a homeless man? You know what I mean? Like he, he, he doesn't exactly he doesn't exactly look the the part. You know what I mean? So right. You know I, I've seen him hit up. I've seen him hit people in the fucking crowd for 
for cash. I hit up promoters for cash. Like after they after they paid him what they owe him, like be like, <laughs> like yo, can I get? It's like what? 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 This is some homeless shit right here. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Twenty, 20 bucks, bucks. Twenty bucks, but you don't always have to suck. You know what I mean? <laughs> this guy tackles the friggin' ref after his fight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah. He's nuts, man. Yeah. I've never seen that you shit know, we happen were, before. We were, so on a, like a comedy story, we were talking the other day. So I have like a couple different, um, I have a couple different fight circuses lined up. So we're doing a Halloween party coming up. And then I'm, yeah. I'm going to do like a, like a smaller one in November. We're going to do fight circus sideshows. We're like, I'm not going to have any names, but we're going to do like a bunch of experimental fights. And then we're looking to do a fight circus in the States, hopefully in the States where we plan on simulcasting. I've already talked about this, so I don't really mind. I talk, talked about it with you guys uh, yeah. in Mississippi, but like we plan on simulcasting and we're planning on doing all the weird shit in America and all the violent fights in Thailand and having two events go at once, like the live aid of, of fight circus of combat sports. And That's we cool. were talking, uh, it, my crew was talking to the people of, uh, uh, of Jackass. And one of the things that we were going to do, we were going to do a, like a, uh, we were, we were going to call it the human shot put. And we were going to try to get Wee Man and have two strong men, like on the strong man tour, <laughs> throw Wee Man as, as far as they could, like human shot put. And obviously, Wee Man's like money, like real, real money. And um, he wasn't exactly down with it. And the names started getting thrown around, like, who would we do? And everybody's like, yo, just do, do it with Crazy Horse, do it with Felony. He'd love to get thrown around <laughs> for a couple grand, you know what I mean? So, shit, if, if, if Felony wants to fly, I'd love to have <clears> fucking <throat> the mountain start tossing him around, you know what I mean? The mountain, like, yeah. I was going to say, you need to get some big boys like Eddie Hall and the mountain. Magnus yeah. Van Magnuson. Get, get that yes. dude. Um, what's, the, what's the, oh, man, I can't remember his name. He's big guy on, on Instagram. He, he. Has a super hot. I don't know. I guess I can't say his name because I can't fucking remember. And if I described his girlfriend, I'd be describing every other girl on the fucking internet. Yeah. So, so hey, let's talk about Fight Circus Three. Look let's at this badass it. poster, everybody. Halloween, Halloween night, fisting yep. for dollars. We're gonna change that name. Actually, we feel like <laughs> that name is has been passed. Uh, great name, obviously. But uh, th th that show just, I mean, getting it canceled was a big, big kick in the dick. And I just kind of want to move on from that. So um, you know, I was analyzing well, this poster and yes. I, it, I did not even realize that you're laid out at the bottom <laughs> until like I probably looked at this poster 15 times. And I love everything about it. The midget ninjas and Bob Sapp and you in, in the, the Indian leg wrestling girl. And I mean, I can't remember her name. She's fucking awesome. But Tracy. Uh, yeah, Tracy. And then I look at the bottom there and I see <laughs> your ass laid out, man. I'm like, fucking guy's brilliant. It's hilarious. Yep. yep. A lot of fingers in the butt that night. A lot of fingers in the butt that night. Um, <laughs> yeah, didn't know that was going to happen. Didn't know that was going to happen at all. Um, yeah, you got attacked. Yeah, man, so, yeah it was, I mean, again, Bob did it. Bob did a very good one. Um, and Bob will be on it. Bob, Bob will be there. It's going to be my team versus his team in uh, Siamese Twins kickboxing. So that will be us taking two men and saran wrapping them together, putting one T-shirt over them. The T-shirt uh -huh. will have two head holes and yet only two arm holes. So uh, they will be able to use both legs and uh, both arms, one obviously using the left, one of them using the right. And it's going to be Bob's team versus my team. He'll be doing a little bit of MC work as well. So we'll... we'll have the back and forth, which um, he plans on doing a lot of Japanese pro wrestling style Konichiwa bitches uh, uh, talk, and I'll just you know talk my normal guff uh, if you will, but that that's going to roll, we do have Will Choke versus Bank and No Money, so MMA symmetrical with the first UFC, former UFC fighter obviously his, he had a loss to Max Holloway which is not a bad loss um, we will have uh, Nong Rose who I think is the best transgender fighter of all time. I mean, Fallon Fox gives kudos because Joe Rogan brought her up, but Nong Rose only fights men. You know what I mean? Has never fought a woman in her life. Um, is very serious. Like, wouldn't take any actual freak show when it came to Muay Thai. One of the 65-kilo guy. We've got Renard Gugui, 
uh, against against her, who's again, I'm I'm super excited, but Bernard Gugui is an actual identical twin, and his identical twin is taking on TT Denman in only kicking human cockfighting. So like that same night. That same night. So we'll have one twin brother coming out, and then your eyes do not deceive you. There is another another twin coming out. It is a circus. So I'm I'm super excited about having both of them on. Um, we got Indi- a lot of Indian leg wrestling on that card. A lot of Indian leg wrestling and a lot of very beautiful women Indian leg wrestling because that's obviously <laughs> stepping up for us. We'll do like an only Indian leg wrestling show coming up. Um, I, I, I really have a clip. On- Mike has a clip. Here. I have a clip of your Indian leg wrestling, actually. I can uh, let me. Uh, For the viewers. Let me put it on right now. I love your reaction in this video. Now, you're the star in this. I don't know how this happens, but you somehow seal the show here at the end. <laughs> Tracy is goddamn friggin' huge. Her legs are gigantic. Huge. She is a fitness model. Now, in the first round of this, the other girl won the rounds, which was amazing. Oh, yeah. Here we go. What's That's my favorite part of the whole video. <laughs> you fucking yeah. loser. You're a loser. Yeah. She started she laughing. She was good yeah, time. she's laughed. But she she's won the first time. round. I was like, I can't oh, believe. Yeah. When that happened, I was like, oh, holy shit. Maybe I don't know a thing. Like that. Yeah. Like going into it, I was like, oh, my God. Look at this fucking shit. It went so, uh, so, so you got a, better than we thought. Go oh, you were chop, you're chopping up a little bit. We were losing you. That's not on my side. No. Mm-hmm. Pay the goddamn cable bill. Yeah, it you... went over. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It went over so much better than I than everybody planned. That again, like, um, are you guys? I mean, like, are you guys into wrestling? Because like, I wasn't into wrestling. I was when I was a kid, and then I got out of right. it. And now AEW mm-hmm. with what, everything that AEW is doing, I'm back into it a little bit. But what I want to do is I want to do like a wrestling. Lucha Libertor, Japan style wrestling. And then I want to have like real life Indian leg wrestling, not like, not fucking around, something that you can bet on. on. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 It all comes down to the gambling, man. If if, if you can gamble on it, it's real. Correct. Correct. (laughs) If you can gamble on it, it's legit. So I just want to get some ladies. I even like, we will be having a tryout on this. Yeah, this coming Tuesday, there's a tryout in Thailand. My whole team is there. And basically, it's how well the girls can smack talk and then how well they can Indian leg wrestle. But the smack talk is going to be, you know, two thirds of the whole game. So uh, we all the girls are, are gorgeous. They're all models. They're all pretties, as we call them in Thailand. Pretty and I'm just, half of them can't speak full English sentences. So they're all going to be like, you know, fuck you, fuck you, fuck her, fuck you. Where'd you find Tracy? Tracy was at a Tiger Muay Thai when I met her originally. Um, she's a fitness coach, dude. She's like very famous on the island of Phuket. Um, you know, she, she, dude, she's amazing. Um, I think Joe Ivy wants to try out. She says, pack my bag, Susan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's get him. Let's get him in there. Let's get him in there. Yeah. Um. Hey, we'll have we'll have some intergender matches. We'll have some guys in there. I'm not afraid. Oh, that's you know? a female, Joe. Jo- Joe's a fem- jo- Joe. Yeah. is I think short for maybe Joanne. But hey, I don't. Joanne. Have... Joanne Josephine. I don't know. Joseph. Joe. Joe. So so you got a si- You got some Siamese twin fighting. You got some leg wrestling. You got uh, some intergender. Are you gonna have any two on ones, three on ones? MMA symmetrical. Banking no money or back versus Will Chope. Um, and obviously we're doing uh, fights in a phone booth. Yes, so, yes, um, yes, yes. And not not only that, but we're also going to, uh, I believe on this one, we're going to do fights in a phone booth. But we're also going to do leg and attire. One of the classic boxing drills. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Two guys by foot in, in, inside the tire and slugging away. Uh, we're giving them eight ounce gloves. 
but three two minute rounds, so very quick action. And I mean, I would expect, obviously, expect a KO in in that because they got nowhere to go. Um, I freaking love it. So that'll be that'll be quite amusing. I think we're doing something like consume uh, ultimate sumo, which I'm a big fan of as well. So it's basically our Pop Warner tackling drill, but with like a Japanese guy in the middle going height. So two guys are on their back. <laughs> You know what I mean? They'll yeah. Be on their back like this, height, and then up and clap a roo. You know, and first one down loses. You know, so yeah. Now, John Joe Ivy says in the comments, "Who comes up with this stuff? Is is it you and a team of brains? Of uh, of is it mostly you? Yeah, mostly. It's, it's me. It's me. Um, one of my artists, Brandon Mendez." Obviously loves to get involved in this. Do you guys know Luke Welling? No. no. Luke Welling's like behind the scenes uh, in the combat sports world because he's really good at, on Twitter and he runs a bunch of people's pages. Um, and like he all he throws in his two cents and I pick him up all the time. Um, and, but yeah, I mean, like I, you know, you sit around and with a bunch of knuckleheads long enough and you think of weird enough shit. The, the thing about it is like I've been in the game long enough that I also know I used to do this just solely as an events coordinator because I ran parties, man. Like I did comedy nights. I, I, I did Tom Dean. I did dog Doug Stanhope. I, you know what I mean? I did good comedy. I did good EDM festivals and things of that nature. And it, they're all the same. You're going to have a party. You're going to have entertainment at it, whether it's fighting or a DJ or a comedian. Um, when COVID hit for me, I started looking heavily to save my business. I started looking heavily into um, looking at the margins. You know, one of the things about MMA that people don't realize, and I'm not, I don't feel like I'm bursting anybody's bubble. Like we're not like a big enough, I'm not even a big enough show to burst a bubble. But the reason that bare knuckle fighting is, is so great is that it, it delivers for all the casual fans out there exactly what they want. A little bit of blood, some good knockouts, but you don't have, the concussion you have in Bob, you don't have the high fight purses that you have amongst WBC boxing. And yep. you don't have the injuries and the medical that you have in May. Because when I would have like a full metal dojo, uh, you know, okay, okay, just to give you an example, on our Bare Knuckle Kingdom show, we had 11 fights on that card and 11 fighters went to the hospital. It was 127 stitches and one broken finger. Stitches are like 10 bought a stitch. It's less than a dime a stitch. So my whole hospital bill was like a hundred bucks. Are you with me? But when I yeah, would do an and... MMA show, when I would do an MMA show, I'd have like two injuries, right? Two people would go to the hospital. Unfortunately, one of those is like an ACL tear and the other guy's blown out his shoulder. And that's like thousands and thousands of dollars. Yeah. You know? So as a fight promoter, fight circus, is like it's the jam in my jelly roll you know what i mean like, <laughs> it, it, it's it's so good like i get to i get to plug away like the like a dj like i'm looking i'm looking to have 10 fights on a fight card five of them are going to be freak shows like just weird weird shit but normally with the weird shit nobody's really getting injured injured you know not too many of these girls in indian leg wrestling are pulling a hammy you right. know right and, and then the really violent shit I'm, I'm doing knuckles off, you know? So like Letway, I've done, I've worked with the WLC for years and I know Letway, it's the most violent combat sport that there is. But the fact is, is a KO doesn't cost as much as uh, torn ligaments. A, 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 a headbutt KO, which everybody loves. It doesn't cost me what a fucking torn groin muscle costs. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And so I'm still looking at it from like, again, I would say that before the, before the pandemic, I was very much, this is my passion project. I'm just throwing in Cause I also did real estate. I, I have other jobs. I think most promoters do. There's only like a couple promoters in the world that are able to do this as a full-time gig. Uh, you know, you got Feldman, you got Chattery, you got, uh, white, you know, you got Dana, obviously, <laughs> but, you know, but then you got like, you know, you got your Bob Arams, you got Scott Kent with lion fight, 
But any of the smaller, like Scott Coker, Scott Coker. But see, again, like Scott Coker, that's his job, right? Yeah. He doesn't own Bellator. No. Right. Right. And there's a difference between being in a corporate position. Because like I'm also, believe it or not, I'm not the most corporate guy ever. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? You don't say. (laughs) You know, so like I, I had other jobs and when the rental market being my main one. And when COVID happened in on the island of Phuket, there is no more rental market. You know, there is no more tourism on in, in Thailand right now. So I was able to adjust and maneuver. And, you know, through mutual friends, I, I knew Dave. I had met him before the, before the pandemic. So we already had a functioning relationship. And I knew Icy Mike. And Icy Mike was like, yo, I want to do things that can't be sanctioned in the States. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So do <laughs> <Yeah. I. laughs> Hell yeah. The, so, the, the, the evil smile comes out and you're course, like, yes, let's do this shit. And, but so again, like, you know, thinking of it like ultimate sumo, ultimate sumo is a, like a worry for me, right? Helmets off tackling drill. Somebody's bound to pop out a shoulder. Yeah. You know? But yeah. phone booth fighting. Let's be realistic. You know, I'm, I'm breaking the fourth wall. I know exactly what the fuck's going to happen. Like, it's too small a quarters for anybody to get a wind up. Right? It's right. Gonna yeah. like two, it's going to look like two squirrels in a sock. Is you it? Know? Are they going to be allowed to headbutt like that way in the we're, phone booth? We're debating. We're debating. Because if you throw in the headbutts right away, obviously that we know that we're going to put them back to back. <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna have them start back to back. We're gonna take them. We're we're gonna put them in a British phone booth, one of the old timey red British phone booths. Mm-hmm. Referee's gonna be able to put his hands through. So we're gonna lose all the the glass in it. Put his hands through. Put the fighters back to back. Hands on the shoulders. Go. Right, and they're gonna have to turn around. And I think that initial couple seconds of like how they turn around. <laughs> like, 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 like I know, I know that I'm using. I know that I'm going to use featherweights or under. We're, like we're debating using females. I'm, I'm wondering, like, can on the turnaround, can they throw like a spinning elbow on Fuck the yeah. way? Yeah, Dude, go is go, right? I cannot yeah. wait. Go means go. Go yeah. means go. Is the so, phone still going to be in there? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Right? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> don't like get wrapped up on it or something. Yeah, one eight one eight hundred. Pick up my teeth. You know I mean? um, oh man! Hey, so Kevin in the comments had a few questions. He says, uh, "How about all, how about female sumo? Is that something you can?" I would and uh, how about a fight circus in New York? So it'll be interesting because again, it does have to do with like sanction. Yeah, so we I was just in Las Vegas, like talking to the Nevada State Athletic Commission, and they were like, So what kind of drugs do you smoke? And I was like, only the best. And they were like, That's not funny. And I was like, it's kind of funny. And <laughs> and, and, and uh like, get out. Yeah. So what what again, like my idea I think is pretty brilliant. Like I will I will simulcast the event, I'll do all violent stuff over in Thailand. I'll do all the entertainment stuff here. And that way I only have to get an entertainment license for Vegas. I don't even have to have the Nevada State Athletic Commission on board because remember the Nevada State Athletic Commission is a couple grand, like not just a couple, like a lot of money, you know? So on getting a return, you know, remember that like, you know, Triller's doing their event this weekend, right? And the best Triller event so far, I know because I know the people from Triller, was was uh Roy Jones Jr. Tyson, right? Okay. They raised like sixty million dollars to do that show and they made ninety million dollars, right? Awesome. When you're talking about that type of millions, it's great. But I'm trying to throw a show for sixty thousand dollars and make sixteen million. Right. Like I'm I'm playing a, a strict margins game. And that's why I'm having fun with it as well because it's basically like gambling, right? You, you, you really do get to lay it on the line. Like I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to see what I can do. What's the best show I can do for, you know, $70,000, $75,000. And then how much return can I get? The thing is, is being on camp soda, those shows have been, you know, 
Cam Soda has been very generous. They've, they've helped out a tremendous amount. But by being on Cam Soda, a lot of sponsorship deals do not want to be on that site. Like, yeah. I, can't get a, I can't get a beer sponsor to save my life. And alcohol is generally the one that pays for fighting. Mm -hmm. Right. That's, and that's, I don't know. I can't believe that, like, the alcohol industry wouldn't want to be on that. So why? Yeah. Because because there's naked women on there. Get the fuck out of here. I mean, <laughs> it, it, I mean, you go on any social media site right now and basically see the same shit almost. I mean, you know what I mean? So get over it. Yeah. But I mean, who has the purchasing power? I mean, this is the thing that like, this is the reason that the industry has gone the way that the industry has gone. Right. Is because as the UFC grows and becomes bigger, they want to market it towards children. I don't really feel like fighting should be a children's sport. No. I think this is man's man shit. But the purchasing power in the whole world comes from parents, right? So it's what the kid wants. And then you as a as a father of young children know that I'm a father of young children. I buy my my kid shit on a stick if he wants it. You know, I'm like, ah, you know, yep. great fecal matter, kid, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, and I hate some of the shit that I buy. And I say I'm not going to get it. And I still get it. Yeah. You know, so they know, like, I mean, I don't really generally like to talk about them, but I think one championship does a fantastic job. Um, I, I don't generally like to talk about them because they're just kind of in my wheelhouse. And like, I know certain guys, they don't even like me talking about them, but I mean, they, they totally are going after, you know, they've got Angela Lee and they've got Angela Lee's sister at 16 years old fighting professionally. Like, I think that that's fucking wrong, but I'm apparently the, the weird one who doesn't want children fighting in a cage. Oh! Yeah. You know what, I mean? what a bad <laughs> guy. Yeah. You're a bad, bad guy. I know, I know. But and, but think about it. It's like... It, but you will not hesitate to throw a Superman costume on a little person and throw their ass in the ring, Noah. Huh? But they're like well, 40. Yeah, I know. They are, they're all in their like 50s. You're right. I can't get any of them <laughs> to fight because they're all geriatric dudes. You know? Um... Yeah, man. I mean, and by the way, little people got to got to make money too, right? Yeah, yeah, I love it. All those so, guys are so happy that I'm bringing them in. You know? Yeah, I bet they are. They got something to do, and and you give them a like, you know, it's like a purpose. Like, hey, I'm gonna fucking go to fight circus. I fucking love that shit, and they, they have probably have a great time. And of, I see, you know, first of all, you get the fights. You're wild as hell and entertaining. The you know, there's all these hot chicks everywhere. There's drinks. There's parties. There's food. I mean, who? Yep. I mean, what a great time! Yes, uh, they probably have a blast. They do, that they do, and like that it is. And Fucking exactly pools. The way. In, in the future, I mean, in the future, I really do plan. Uh, like when I was in Vegas, all I was doing was talking to like circus to lay people. You know what yep. I mean? In the future, I want people on stilts. I want jugglers. I want fire breathers i want acrobats um i know that again like we're definitely gonna have lady boys in in thailand do chicken fights in a pool yeah i saw that actually on <laughs> we were watching today that you and bob sap had a competition yes. that will lead in that's leading into fight circus three where you yes. guys did like uh you had two people eat hot food yep uh, and then you, you, uh, one, you, of the, one of those people being Khalil Roundtree. Khalil Roundtree. Oh, wait, it wasn't you, Khalil Roundtree. You, you I called thought him it was something else, though. Khalil Squarebush, because he won't let Square me. Squarebush, that's right. Squarebush, <laughs> not Roundtree. Squarebush. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then you guys had, uh, Ladyboy Chicken. Yep, Ladyboy Chicken. Boy chicken we're, gonna, we're gonna put on the gloves. Beautiful. We're gonna put on the gloves. So, Ladyboy on Ladyboy and in a pool, <laughs> but then and glove him up and let him actually throw dukes. Nice. So, yeah. Why, why not? Strange so lady boys got to eat too. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And you know what? Speaking of eating, you mentioned an idea to us that on cam soda, as the events are going on, if people want to directly tip the fighter that's Correct. fighting, the fighter will have like their, their own channel. So to say that you can just tip directly towards the fighter. And then also you mentioned something about being able to tell them what, what moves to do. You yes. put money in, you say, do a spin uh, and back have fist. A tip menu, right? Right. Yes. Basically. We should be having that for this Halloween show. It, I mean, it might be a little too soon. Uh, it might have to go on the next one. But I, I know that we'll actually have, like, we'll have them via fight. We just don't know if we'll have it via individual. Do you know what I mean? So 
we'll get it done in the future. But yes, you will actually be able to be in touch with the overcard, not the undercard. Are you with me? So during the show, if you know what fight is in the co-main event or main event, you can be chiming in with the team that's there saying what you want. And just as you have it pop along the ticker or pop along the, the pop-up ad, it'll say something like, you know, TJ Chang, I'll give you a hundred bucks if you do only spinning shit for the first round. You know what I mean? Fabiano, if you come in and, and, and you know, do the Mark Arena before the fight, uh, you know, I'll give you 50 bucks. Yeah. That type of stuff. So I think that that'll lead to a lot more human interaction as crypto comes into play as well. Cause I know we're talking with a lot of crypto people and if we can get crypto going, I would actually like to get wagers to go on the show because the future for, for wagers is prop betting. Yeah. I don't know. If oh, yeah. Prop, prop betting is huge. It's I love prop, prop betting. Prop, I, yeah. I mean, I don't bet often, but well, I love like, to take read a look, them take a look at the, uh, the, the, Logan Paul Mayweather. Floyd Floyd because it was an exhibition you couldn't bet on the outcome of the fight but you could bet on every little square inch of fucking detail in, involved from Correct. the walkout music to the first word out of Floyd's mouth after he wins or yes yeah it was what are they going to walk out to in terms of song right Who's really? draw blood first it's you know? really it's really smart man and like uh I mean, we we all like we're all around the same age, man. We, we've been betting on prop bets on Super Bowl Sunday for fucking ever. <laughs> to how how long the national anthem is going to be? You know what color Lady Gaga is going to wear at fucking halftime? Exactly. You name it, they you could bet on it. So yep, yeah, dude. They have things like Paul loses mouthpiece. Uh, both fighters knocked down. Uh, Paul bites Mayweather. Will they touch gloves? <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? You, you can literally uh, bet on every anything. Yep. Yeah. Who enters the ring first? Which part of the face will bleed first? Lip or mouth? Eye socket? Brow? Like it's insane. 100. percent And again, <laughs> I think I think that's totally the route that we're going to go. Um, it's interesting. Again, like I meet with lawyers all the time. Thailand is such a gray area. Like gambling like prostitution is illegal, but it's very well known for it. I mean, like we have one of the biggest gambling communities in the world. So like, it's interesting because I can promote gambling. I can't be a book. Hmm. So like, like when I do bare knuckle kingdoms in the future or, or bare knuckle fighting championship Asia, which is definitely on the horizon, I'll be the one talking about like the, the pluses and minuses i'll be you know what i mean it'll be like panda minus 120 against you know you know a tony has plus 125 right and i can do all the commercials for it and i can have all the digital ads come up for it but nobody can actually bet on it through us or associated to us which is stupid but i don't care like i don't need to that i don't need to cross that line anyway so mm-hmm. whatever the more the merrier yeah, I love it, man. I love what you're doing. I love the uh, just the whole the brains behind the operation. You guys have come up with something so unique. There are other organizations kind of trying to like steal some of your thunder, like you said, like Thriller. You mentioned th- Thriller. I mean, not Triller. Tr- Triller, not Triller. I watched the video that somebody had sent us that you know Triller, Thriller, Man in the Mirror. That shit yes. was fucking. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that shit was fucking brilliant. Um. <laughs> But anyways, man, we appreciate talking to you all the time. Like you, what you're doing, like I wanted to, you know what I wanted to ask you? And this is, this is, so my commander today was like, we, we got to come up with something fun for the troops and blah, 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 blah. We had this gigantic hanger, right? First thing that I thought of was get my friend Chris Simmons to come down and give like a jujitsu uh, seminar. But, you know, all the officers are so safety conscious now. They're like, uh oh, People won't know when to fucking stop and everyone, you know, and next thing you know, we got fucking snapped arms and I'm like, we just make it clear that this is a seminar and we're not trying to kill each other. No, too many injuries possible. I'm like, so what stupid. would it take to get like a for the troops fight night at our hangar with Blackhawks and and uh, CH 47s, yep. Chinooks or like around the perimeter with a fucking ring in the middle and some stands like. 
what would go into making something like that happen? I'm, I'd be 100 down kind of, to try to yeah, get that done. That's what I'm of saying. Course. We have a huge hanger. It's big. Again, I don't. I don't think it'd be very hard at all because, again, because you're in the military, you have so many things that can happen right off the bat that are going to be accommodated for you. That again, like. Again, not to be a dick to the fighters, but everybody's a dime a dozen right now. Everybody's a spoke on the wheel. You're all cogs, right? Yeah. So, so getting them isn't isn't going to be that hard. I still, I I believe I told you this, but we are also going to do a game that has to stand alone, and we're we're calling it last man standing. But it is going to be paintballing, teams of five, right. and again, so it'll be a team of five, team of five in a paintballing course. And the, the, the last person that doesn't get shot drops his gun and he's going to fight right then and there. So if, if the, the team that has players left, they get to pick the player. If it's not, it's one on one. They just go at it. But say it gets down to two on one. They're just going to fight Muay Thai, straight up Muay Thai right there. One person's out. He'll go on to the next guy. If he wins, he wins. His team wins. Last man standing. <clears throat> and I, mean, I, I personally think that you guys have all the capabilities of doing something along those lines. And, you know, I can fart these ideas all day long. So uh, <laughs> feel, free to, feel free to take it and run with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hell yeah. Kevin says circus for the troops. I love, I love it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, it would be great. Uh, I mean, again, like it, it depends on where you are, but if you guys were able to allow me to be able to do stuff and not have, the prices of a governing body over i'd be glad to do it entertainment license are 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 not much they're hundreds of dollars not thousands of dollars it's athletic commissions that really really decide to jump on you and like again it's it's weird because for instance nevada state athletic commission if you do striking to the head it falls under nevada state athletic commission but if you don't do strikes to the head so like only kicking i can do only kicking all day it's not even under ISKA. It's not under anything. So human cockfighting is go time in, in Vegas without, <laughs> you know what I mean? Without anybody. Um, we're going to do human, like in Vegas, we plan on doing human crab fighting, which is the same as that Siamese twins that I was talking about. We're going to sit saran wrap two people together, <laughs> saran wrap two people together, put a, put a t-shirt over them, but no arm sleeves. So it's just four legs. <laughs> no way. Yeah. I thought you were gonna have them like walk on their hands on their back. Yeah, I, I thought yeah. like I thought you were like crab walking and cross like stomp each other. You've just come up with a new one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know we were talking down in Biloxi, and after we started talking about how you can tip on Camp Soda and all that, I had mentioned to you how about people when the fighters come out instead of like Trinity rules where you go from boxing to kickboxing to MMA or boxing to Muay Thai, whatever yeah. that they don't know what they're doing and the votes get accumulated from the crowd or the people watching cam soda. And they say, all right, the first round is spinning moves only. They go yes. in, you tell them right before they get up from, okay, right before they're, you know, all right, touch gloves, spin a move, uh, spin a moves only. And then, <laughs> you know, they go to the stool between rounds voting commences and all of a sudden it's like kicks only for the second round, you know, 100%. and they just don't know what they're going to be getting into. And you can do like a five round fight where it's just madness. The technology definitely caught up during the pandemic as well. So the te yeah. technology is now there. I mean, you guys are stream yarding and you guys can throw up whatever you want. So we'll be able to do it. Lickety split. I don't know. If, by the way, you guys should look into black magic. Like if you're in the stream yard, the black magic switcher is like, it's like ESPN level broadcast stuff that's now made for the for the average Podcast. Joe. Yeah. You know? Black Magic, know. same people who make DaVinci Resolve, that yeah. company. Yep. Yep. Black Magic is the new gem because I mean it's like like I obviously fuck around with uh Photoshop pretty well. Mm -hmm. And I know how to edit. Like I I went to film school and I've I've done my fair fair share. But now there are things like uh Pixomatic. Like that, that's my one that I, that's my jam. I suggest it to everybody because Pixomatic, it's a, it's on your phone and it does everything that Photoshop does. So it's like instant, like the, the memes that I make and stuff, hmm. are, they generally take me 10 to, I, I, I spend no more than 15 minutes making hmm. these things. And I think you guys can see how many I generate, like oh, I'll yeah. be sitting in the toilet 
and just like, yep, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put my face on fucking Mike Tyson's, you know what I mean? And there it Pix- is. Pixomatic. Yeah, Pixomatic. Pixomatic. I should, remember again, that. they should be a sponsor of mine. I'm downloading that tonight. Uh, Listen up, Pixomatic. Get your fucking act straight. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. What but are you yeah. waiting for? Well, again, thank you guys for having me on. I'm I'll do this as, as much as I can. When I get over to Thailand, it'll be a lot a lot easier for me. It'll be my morning, your evening, because that's yeah. how the globe works. Yeah. Um, but yeah, again, like thank you guys and for doing what you're doing as well, especially with all the bare knuckle stuff. I mean, like we definitely do have to keep supporting the uh, the teams that are going, the fighters that are going, and of course yep. the organization for making the things happening. I think what Dave Feldman is doing over there is genius. Bare knuckle yep. is something that is going to be known. It's going to be disseminated farther than it is now. More people are going to be fans. It's going to happen. It just is. It's it's in this. It's almost the same thing that happened with MMA, where people think, ah, oh, like yo, oh, it's fucking human talk fighting and blah 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 blah, and it's crazy and it's this and that. And it's like, guys, it's a fucking fist fight. If you're at the gas station, right, and you're pumping your fucking three dollar unleaded gas right now, mm-hmm. thank you, fucking. You know who? So fucking, you, you see two guys coming out, and they're like, "Oh, what the fuck!" And they start punching each other in the face. Every person in that in that gas station is coming out. They're gonna be looking out the window. Yep. You're gonna you're gonna be overfilling the gas tank. You know, you, it, people are gonna be staring. They're gonna be running over. They're gonna be watching. Everybody wants to see it, but somehow, hey, look at these two guys are in a ring, and there's a doctor's there, and there's yep. a referee to break it up. Ah, that's too much. I can't deal with that. Oh no, yep. I can't. Uh uh-uh. uh. It's like you're kidding you, me. Uh, I, the number two organization in Russia is hardcore. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, of course, the UFC has has their lock in there. The number two organization is hardcore. Uh, Southeast Asia is going to go next. Uh, China, everybody wanted to break into China. The Chinese don't like the ground. I worked for Kung Moon for like four years. San Chao and, and Wushu still are so more dominant than, than MMA. And when Bare Knuckle hits over to China, I, I'm telling you, it's going to grow faster than the UFC. I I don't doubt it at all, man. I I swear to God, it's uh, I just can't wait to see where this where the where the bare where the sport of bare knuckle is two three years from now because it's grown so much in the three years since it started. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's just like with the BKFC. I BKB has been around longer, but like yep. BKFC twenty eighteen to now, they made gigantic strides, and now it's just like now they're signing big names. They're getting more marketable. They're getting into new states. Yep. I, I fucking love it. Well, I have, a, I have an interesting theory on that that I'll throw your way that, that just normally combat sports fans are like when I was a fan of Nirvana when I was 12. Like when when skateboarding was out, when you were young, you were like, it's, it's mine. And you didn't allow anybody to grow it, right? Like I yeah. know smells like teen spirit. Yep. You can't know what sm- smells like teen <laughs> spirit is. That's my favorite song. You can't like that song. And that's like every, that's the way that MMA was. It was like, I, I like tap out. I wear the tap out shirt. You can't wear the tap out shirt. Right. right? But everybody that's in into BKFC is from an older generation and they all want it to grow. So everybody's friendly as, as all hell. You go to the events and just everybody's a buddy. You're, you're, you know what I mean? I had so many drinks bought for me at the, at the last show and everybody was such a, like a real, you know, fans. They were fun. Right. Yeah. It wasn't like yes. everybody was selfish and it's mine. So I think that I think that's a, a major reason why the BKFC family is kind of being able to grow the way that they're growing and and really inviting everybody along to the party instead of excluding the nerds. We well, we agree with that 100 percent with the we've been to multiple events now and I have yet to run into like a fucking true dickhead. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, we I haven't think- encountered them. If they're there, we really haven't encountered them. We just meet people. Everybody's so nice, always welcoming, you know, no matter whether it's a, a fighter or someone who works there like uh, Brian Sosha or Rob uh, Brazas or, you know, anybody that it's, it's been awesome. Even like the, the BKFC brass, like, um, like Feldman and, and, and Nate Shook and, and Cranston, those guys like, 
they were friendly as hell. You know what I mean? Yep. They they wouldn't have they didn't hesitate to sit down and like have a fifteen minute conversation with us. You know what I mean? So it's like in Biloxi, yeah, we talked to a lot of people. That's where when we met you, we stopped. Yep. We were like, oh, that's John Nutt. Let's just stop and talk to him for a minute. We ended up talking for fucking fifteen minutes, and then sure. next, you know, next thing we know, we're talking the next day. We're talking in the hotel. We're talking out by the pool. Like it, it's like, and everybody's there, and it's like, then you have this whole crowd <laughs> of people. And everybody's so friendly. And it, it, yeah, it's really crazy. You know, Kevin Smith is out there and Lorenzo Hunt. And then you come walking over. I don't know if you went to eat, you know, and like everybody comes outside. Oh, people are outside. Let's go say hi, you know. Yeah. And, and then there's K uh, Caleb Harris is up, uh, you know, just uh, shadow boxing up on the stairs. You know, it's like, it's insane, man. Everybody's so fucking nice. Yeah, man. That they are. They're all dicks. Travis well, Thompson they're says they're all they're, dicks. Yeah. Meanwhile, Double we go Warriors. Miami. <laughs> BKFC 18, my my sister-in-law lives, it's really Fort Lauderdale, they say Miami, but we're in Fort Lauderdale or Hollywood, right? My sister-in-law, we stay with her. So we're like, let's go out to breakfast. So we go out to breakfast, we sit down, and as we're walking in, we see Travis Thompson. And we're like, oh, hey, what's going on? We say hi to him, we sit down, She, you know, and then a couple other guys sit next to her. Uh, was it was it Eddie? Was it Hawk? No, I thought it was Arzano that... that whatever but either either way like either like way we, say, we see another like, people more people at another table so we're saying hi to them and we you know and we sit back down and she's like how the fuck do you guys know more people up the street from my house than i do yeah exactly. and like it's because all the people from this area like everyone who's fighting and they're going out but they're just so friendly that they'll just come up and say hi to you like they see you they're gonna say hi to you like it's a it is it's a unless it's a they, fucking unless really welcoming see, Unless they see Malo somewhere, and they'll probably take a swing at him. Hell, <laughs> or not. Yeah. Anyway, we realize so he's a nice guy in person. We've been we've been chatting with the, the one John Nutt. That's right. For an hour and a half, hour and fifteen minutes now. We could do this all night, but yeah. Bright Circus Three, Halloween oh, night. That's a Sunday, right? It's actually, it's, actually, it's actually your Saturday night, so you guys get it October thirtieth. It's my Halloween. Oh, so okay. I'm, I'm, I'm doing Perfect. it Sunday morning in in Thailand. Actual Halloween, the thirty first. It's your shift night, as they call it in Philadelphia. So it's the night before, right? It's the night where every every clown went out and toilet papered houses and did the eggs and all that type of shit. Yeah. When I was a kid, um, and I uh, I don't think they do that anymore because they're on their iPads, but. Needless no, to say, they, they walk uh, up be, uh, milk crate pyramids instead. Yeah, yeah. I just got a T-shirt that says I'm I'm the milk crate champion of the world or something like that. My wife got it for me. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So it'll be your Saturday night. Uh, I think it's on at nine o'clock uh, your time, Eastern Standard Time, six o'clock West Coast. And um, yeah, that that Halloween weekend it'll be going. So and we uh, catch it on camp. So the fight circus will be in town. And yeah, I mean, it should be on Camp Soda. I have to ice the mic yet, actually. I mean, like, I, I don't know why it wouldn't be. Um, we've talked about having it be on a pay-per-view site and on Camp Soda, like, with their permission, obviously. But uh, obviously, because there's so many people that are like, hey, is there any way that I could get it without the finger blasting on the side of the screen? And I'm like, no. <laughs> no, no, you can't. <laughs> it's part of the deal. It's just part out. of the deal. It's man. the art of the deal, is what that's it a, is. That's a that's a perk. That's a perk to the show. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and one last question before we let you go: um, Will we see another uh, Bare Knuckle Kingdom soon? And uh, if so, how soon? Well, we talked to, we talked about it being in November um, with Dave over the over the past. But they, uh, I mean, like on a surprise for you, there's a there's a big dog in the in the in the fight his name is nick chapman he was my uh one of the referees for for the bare knuckle kingdom the big, big dude, ball, ball british dude. guy fantastic fighter uh, in his own right uh, uh fans man great entrepreneur obviously does his thing and um bare knuckle kingdom will stay bare knuckle kingdom it'll be my show like with me being me but they want to grow bare knuckle fighting championship to the point where there's like Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship Asia, Bare Knuckle Fighting Chip Championship South America, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship uh, Russia. And so uh, Nick Chapman plans on on really doing like a BKFC Asia event. And if that happens in November, I will kind of step back and I'll work with him from like, I'll put on the suit. I'll put on the suit, I'll put on the tie and I'll be behind the scenes. 
and making sure everything goes goes smoothly from the events coordination and the broadcast side. And hopefully, it, you know, he'll run it. He'll run it like a fucking wheel, bro. He'll make it roll. So um, I would then back up the Bare Knuckle Kingdom to December. Um, my schedule is already, again, like we're doing Halloween, two shows in, in uh, November already. Um, and then we're looking for that December simulcast. And I, I, I think I told you guys that I really do want to do a fight show that's the original tournament fighting style. championship. Yeah. So it would, just, it would just be the UFC rules of, of of the first UFC, and to the point where I again want to copy them and say that it's happening in Boulder, Colorado, in 1993, yeah. even though it's done in Phuket. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. And and you were saying that it would be like a, a true UFC one style tournament. The winner is going to have to fight three times that night. Yep. Fuck, Bob, that'll, Bob that'll, that'll be... actually wants to be Jim Brown. <laughs> the announcer is gonna go. Oh yeah, Bob Sap. <laughs> no, he, Sap. We're gonna call him Jim Light Brown. <laughs> Jim Light Brown. <laughs> yeah. Light Brown. Again, Ken, yeah. Ken, Ken Shamrock. Kenny Clover. Kenny Clover. Kenny Clover. You know? That fucking guy. That announcer. I love it. Yeah, I love so, it, man. I love it. And you're gonna burp when it starts. Of course. Remember that? Yeah, the that? guy burped. <laughs> oh, Art Jimerson. I want, I, I need, Art I, Jimerson. I wanted this guy, Bam Morris, to wear one glove and play Art yes. Jimerson. You know what I mean? Bart Rimerson. Remember the what? guy 200 and 0? Oh, of course. How many oh, street, street fights? fights. Yeah. <laughs> Cab <laughs> driver. Oh, man. I'll so, tell yeah. you, did, did I tell you, did I tell you that, um, I think I did about the Keith Hackney dick punch. Oh, I I went on his in his I went on his Wikipedia, and um added to his movie biography, and I added uh <laughs> it was called Dick Punch, uh Ballad of the Mustn't Touch, starring <laughs> star, <laughs> starring Keith Hackney, and that fucking thing was on his Insta on his uh, Wikipedia for like a solid year, man. I would go back yeah. like every couple weeks <laughs> just to make sure it's still there. <laughs> It was fun. dick punch, ballad of the mustn't touch. It was fucking dude. I got a I got a weird one for you because like mustn't obviously touch. people are now reaching out to me that that are that are weird. And again, we're we're gonna we're gonna have this be the last one. But um, there's a there's a gem of a human being uh, <laughs> named Harold Diamond who lives in in Phuket. Harold Diamond, you guys, you can he's Googleable, full Googleable. Harold uh, Diamond. Harold Diamond I'm doing it now. <laughs> Harold Diamond was the stick fighter against Rambo in Rambo three. <laughs> okay. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah. And he I'm was looking like, at him. he was like, do you think that we can do some sort of like styrofoam bat <laughs> stick fight where it's just like, or like we could do, we could do like towel whips, lacerations, put goggles on. So there's no, doesn't have to have any eye, eye you know, bludgeoning and contact there, but we could actually just, fuck each other up with uh with styrofoam bats why why couldn't you harold diamond you know what i mean <laughs> so i want the original guy the original stick fighter from rip three i definitely want him on in the future he can be doing breakdance fighting and then stick fighting whatever it doesn't matter i fucking love it i'm actually looking at the picture of him and stallone on the set right now and it's freaking hilarious yes. man well dude you're uh you're an, you're a freaking evil genius. We love your work. We look forward to Thank Fight you. Circus 3. We look forward to the next uh Bare Knuckle Kingdom and whatever else you got in store for us. Hopefully we see uh, Diego Sanchez and Joshua Fabia hanging by their feet in a, in a bat swing fight mm -hmm. very soon. Yeah. <laughs> fight Circus. I right. want it so bad. I want it yeah. so bad. Well, thank right, you man. gentlemen as well and I will obviously stay in touch. Uh you guys can sign me out and then keep talking if you want, or I can just leave you now. It doesn't matter. All right, man. Well, thank you very much, and uh, we will talk to you soon, all right? Salute all to right. you guys. Have a great all evening. Right, brother. See you later. Yep. All right, Mike. We got work to do tomorrow. We John do. Nutt, I'll tell you right now, the first time we saw John Nutt was on Bare Knuckle Kingdom. That's right. We didn't know about Fight Circus. And I got to be honest, no. I thought he was out of his fucking mind. Yep. And I was like, what's wrong with this fucking dude? He is 
out of his fucking mind. Yeah. He's yelling crazy shit. I oh, we didn't even bring up when the dude got the gash on his forehead and he was like, yeah. holy shit, that guy's got a fucking vagina on his face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, sir. We're all taking turns fucking that later, he says. We're like, what? Well, yeah, we couldn't believe it. <laughs> his whole his whole uh his whole suit was changing color. Yeah, and then but now that we talk to him and we see what he's doing with the fight circus yeah. ideas and all the shit, the tire fighting, the Siamese twin fighting, the phone we fight. I'm not sure he's not out of his mind. I'm not sure. <laughs> I think he might uh, be. We're all a little out of our minds, but you can see that there is a method. And there's a method to, to his madness. madness. There's a method to his madness. And I think that his his little niche that he's got there is going to go a long ways. And as long as he's oh, got yeah. Thailand locked down and they could keep getting away with these like non sanctionable fucking wild, entertaining, wild fights. I mean, it's outstanding. And now uh, we really appreciate him coming on because yep. we had somebody else lined up. We had someone sort of lined up that couldn't give us a definitive answer all the way up until last night. He still couldn't give us a definitive answer. Yep. And I, and I shot, um, we know shot Mr. Nut a, uh, you know, a request to come on if he, if he had time and know he was around in the States and he yep. did not hesitate. He said, absolutely. You know, and we had a good conversation down there in Biloxi with him. And uh, like, like Mike said, we talked to him for about 15 minutes at the arena. Then we yep. went back to the hotel and then we were all having drinks. We had like all the fighter, like uh fight teammates and, down in the lobby, they had like the you know the lounge and a little bar down yeah, there. In the and, and we ended up, I ended up standing pool. there talking to him and his boy for like him and his boy Jason, I think his name. Mm -hmm. Him and Jason. Yep. I I, f I feel like I talked to him for like two fucking hours that <laughs> night, and then the next day out by the pool, we're doing interviews with all the all the different fighters, and I'm like, and I think you shot. I no, did. You shot John a a message saying, mm -hmm. "Hey, you want to come by the pool?" And do a little interview with us and didn't hesitate again. And you know what I mean? Thank you for coming on tonight. Uh, we're definitely fans of your work and uh, we'll be talking to you soon. With that said, uh, what do we got going on this weekend, Mike? I mean, are you saying like us or in the world of fight sports? Okay, we could do that. Uh, we're going to wrap it up real real quick, but don't forget you got BKFC 21 tomorrow night. Correct. A big, big big event tomorrow night. Get the BKTV app. Watch that one. Um, there's sort of a freak show Saturday night. Evander Holyfield versus TRT Tour. Oh, yeah. I don't got no fucking pictures for that shit. Do you, know, you know what I do? You know who's commentating? Yeah, Trump. Donald J. Trump is commentating that it's gonna fight. going to be on the undercard the of that fight. You got um, Tito Ortiz boxing Anderson Silva. And speaking of Anderson Silva, mm -hmm. did you see who Brandon Lambert is fighting at Celebrity Boxing? Yes. An but Anderson Silva's son. No. Yes. Not true. It's not him. That's what Eli Eliza Silver is not. I know he said that, but it, oh, but it wasn't his son. It's not his son. Oh, no. Nope. Okay. And also, it's not his son. It's someone else. It's just some guy who's a boxer. But it's off as of today. Oh, Triller. So earlier, I saw that Lambert put something out saying, This is how I found out my fight's off. And it was a blue check mark guy. I don't know what his name is. Someone who probably runs Triller, right? Some promoter. And mm -hmm. it said, Brandon Lambert. And Eliza Silver fight is off because Brandon Lambert had an aneurysm at some point or something. So Brandon Lambert was like, oh, so you put my fucking health shit out there, you assholes? And then he wrote some shit about, like, I'm going to sue these fuckers or something. So I was like, well, go for it because fuck them. Because they did. They put that right out there on social media. You can go and look at it right now. Wow. It's out there. That's fucked up. Yeah. Well, yeah like, yeah, like like John Nutt said about an hour ago, you know, th this is a ruthless sport. You know, it's a ruthless game, this combat sports, you know. But it's why would, up. you know, why wouldn't they just contact him and tell him and then say the fight's canceled instead of putting out, like, what his health was and then saying it was canceled? I mean, it's kind of weird. It's so fucked up. And like Joe Ivey said, it's not a secret. It's not a lot of people know about it. But yeah. it she doesn't said, mean. He put his own crap out there, she said. So. Well. But still, 
in America, we have a thing called HIPAA, and it's a violation of your medical history. So they don't, I don't think, have the right to put out his medical history. And you right. can be, I think, well, I don't know between them two, them two entities, if he can sue them, but it's definitely illegal. Right, to put his medical. You cannot do it. Yep. Nope. If my doctor or somebody shared my medical shit, I will be bringing them to fucking court and suing them in a heartbeat. Yep, yep, yep. So BKFC tomorrow night. Evander Holyfield, yes. Vitor on Saturday night. Is there a UFC this weekend? I don't think No, there but is, there's no this. UFC. Oh, and BYB, BYB 7. BYB Saturday night as well. Jesus, man. There's a lot yep. of combat sports uh, this weekend. Gabriel so. Fryer is fighting on BK uh, BYB 7. So, you know, everybody remember Gabriel Fryer from, uh, was it two weeks ago he was on, right? Yeah, he was uh, He was our fighter and uh, veteran guest. I think That's last, correct. I thought it was last week, dude. Was it last week? No, last week he was not on because last week we weren't on on Wednesday and we had a Thursday show with five people. Oh, yeah. Okay. So it was two weeks ago. Yeah. Anyways. You know what else is one? You know what, what else, else is Saturday? BKB. What? Holy shit, man. Yeah. There's a lot going on. Yes. I guess I didn't pay attention to how much actual combat sports is this weekend because yeah. I've been prepping for this drill all fucking week long. So. Yeah. With that said, man, I gotta get going. I gotta go to bed, and um, and we gotta get up early in the morning and and be soldiers. So, yeah. thank you guys all for tuning in. Make sure you uh, you know, like and share and do all that stuff. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, and um, you know, go over to Fighter Friends and buy yourself some vapes, and uh, use the promo code Mish Twenty and hook hook to show up a little bit, get a little get a little discount, and uh. Smoke them if you got them. And smoke them if you got them. With that said, you guys are the best. As always, you guys have a great evening. Peace out.